Alright, first off, I'd like to say thanks, Ryan, for giving me the shirt off your back at the track the other day. Um, extra medium fits fantastically. <laughs> Let me get you one. Hey! Yeah! <laughs> Alright, back to business. Since the LT2 is such a pain in the ass, you have to have all the extra stuff. Um, I had to shave the whole bottom of this thing off, the back of it. I had to drill and tap this last night. And this is janky as all hell, but I'm not hacking up my kids' harnesses, and I don't have one of those um, extender deals. So anyway, just drilled and tapped the hole in there for the map sensor, and then uh, RTV'd it in place. Again, 95 mil throttle body. So all the manifolds today, stock this one and the other, will be on 95 mil throttle bodies. The reason being, I don't want to handicap any of the manifolds, right? So if we're going to do a legit manifold test you can't have the restriction in the front be the determiner of what the freaking manifolds make it doesn't even make sense so the other thing is i believe the minimum cost for these is like 250 bucks i don't know what people charge to shave all the crap down and put the little ancillary pieces in and sell you a um extension harness and all that stuff but i guarantee you it's not free so the ported uh stock manifold is 350 actually all of our porting would have been 350 the reason we stopped doing these was because we didn't see the results that we had hoped for. Um, I actually found a post where I was all excited, hoping this thing was going to get rid of the MSD, because if anyone goes back and reads any of my posts, I am not a fan of the MSD manifold uh, at all. I would love to design my own that fits under the hood, that's everything I wanted to do, but we just haven't had the opportunity yet. Anyway, um, we used to also shave this down. Um, I would plastic weld it shut and then we would put the actual um, You know a proper bung in here to where you could just connect in with your other stuff uh, like from the factory But with all the extra work that goes into this thing I was gonna charge 550 to port them, but then we didn't see any results. So In my mind it was wasn't worth it. So I think the other argument that people were making was that Basically you could buy this manifold for 220 bucks unported slap it on and you would make per more performance than an unported stock intake. Maybe. I for the know. money, they're saying, but you know, it's a good... But for the money, but if you're going to port a stock manifold for less money than this costs you, and, and get it done... And to where make it more performance, on, yeah. And make the same... What, what's the difference? Like, yeah. I don't understand. I don't either. Um, so anyway, I can't think of any more fair testing. Like I said, we got our referee over here. Probably going to play Brett Cheats. <laughs> He's had that in his pocket for like two hours. <laughs> I've been playing again. Waiting, waiting. Yeah, so if everybody so, doesn't know. Independent tuner, unbiased. Andrew Dunkel, go ahead and introduce yourself, sir. So, I tune LS stuff, LT stuff, run everyone's stuff. Probably Brett stuff, good results. GPI stuff, good results. Um, I'm going to talk shit if stuff doesn't work. If it works, I'll tell you the truth. I have no money in the game. I don't even own an LT car, so it is what it is. Yeah. Yep. And I would say if I was going to have somebody else tune LTs for me, it would be him. He's seen my tunes in the past. We've worked on cars together. I'm A6 tarted, like everybody knows. So, you know, he tunes my A6 stuff in the LT platforms. So he's got full access to all my tuning. But yet he chooses to do his own thing, which is great. And we refer, we most refer, of the time, if people come to us with LS stuff, yeah. we send them to Andrew. Yep. Right. Yeah. So, however, he uses the same dyno for all of his in-house stuff. So there's really no questioning the results. And honestly, end all be all numbers don't matter what i'm looking for is gains losses and curves right i mean thing is dead stock with a jlt on it that's it like still has the stock covers all that crap so right now we're trying to get a baseline off of her uh you know like i said dead stock everything um I made like 406 or something before. It looks like it's spun on the first pass. About as simple and as baseline as you can possibly get. I tuned this car, Jesus, a year or two ago? I don't know. But everyone that says, oh, watch that. Yeah. That the, uh, my tune changed, my tune changed. No, it didn't. As long as the car doesn't change, the tune doesn't change. This thing made 406 or something a couple years ago or whatever it was. Have not touched this car at all. It's still the same. So it's in a couple horsepower. Um, yeah. And like I was saying too, I don't know if it's this dyno. I don't know what the deal is, but no spin, no nothing. But with my tuning, 
they end up pretty freaking close, not a 30 wheel difference. So I don't know what the, I don't know if it's because of the 248 or, you know, I don't, I don't know. But anyway, this will be our baseline. brought it in uh, we did two pulls first pull it spun we're thinking that on this pull it spun a little bit as well um, the curve just doesn't look as right normally we see like that you know 10, 10 to 16 10 to 18 and I'll pull up the next um, one but anyway next we did the uh, well this and this was on stock manifold right? yes stock so we didn't talk so, about that yeah sorry my bad so like I said, that car had never been touched, right? So that was a uh, stock uh, intake manifold, stock throttle body. You know, like we had to pop all the clips. Like that thing had never. It had still had the rubber under the intake, yeah. all of that. So dead stock. Like this is the LT1 that your car comes with, the stock throttle body, stock, stock intake. Now we've done all this testing before, you know, a bajillion times. Um, but it was kind of cool that six years later we could. Immediately back up what we've always claimed our ported stock intake manifolds and throttle bodies make. Now, granted, you know, I would say add 10 to that or whatever. And, you know, I don't think, like yeah, if you follow the, the curve, curve, right? You know, it should make identically the same curve and come in. So, but basically it looks like there's just a little tire spin and then it caught up. Um, so, so this is stock to stock, stock ported or stock intake and then stock ported intake. Yep, stock right. ported intake with, with, a, a with a 95 millimeter throttle. Yep. Bar. So we use the 95 millimeter for all of our testing today of all the manifolds. And to start this off, also all the manifolds were ported by me. So um, we went back, we looked at all the testing, and we tried to find you know posts and things like that. We couldn't find anything after I posted that I hoped that the LT2 was going to be the new shining knight in armor because I'm not a fan of the MSD at all but that was the only thing available at the time of our testing. I couldn't find where we went back and actually tested it. Um, I don't know what happened, if it was, you know, I'm not really sure, but from gauging what we'll show you guys and the manifolds that we were pulling off that pulled in that had ported uh, LT2s on it and comparing them to the numbers that we had seen prior to with our ported LT1s and our ported MSDs, I think we just thought it wasn't worth even trying to test. Um, well, because it just made less power. It and... just made less everywhere. I mean, <clears throat> if it's we... ugly. It's ugly putting it on there. It's yeah, it's a pain in the ass. Installing I mean, the thing. Yeah, you have to shave yeah. the whole bottom of it or whatever. You got to, you know, drill and tap shit. You got to yeah, plug shit. Yeah, there is no like it's two hundred fifty dollars. I slapped it on. That's a farce, dude. That's not real. Um, you got to pay somebody to shave the bottom, even if you want to do it yourself. You still got to buy the harness extension, all that other stuff. So you're still like three hundred, four hundred, five hundred bucks, whatever the hell it is. I don't know into putting in an LT2 on your car. And that's before you pay for any porting or any anything. So I guess we'll just get to the LT2, which I'm pleasantly surprised now that I've seen one that I actually worked on, you know, do something because I'm not against anything that makes power, man. But if we look at the physics of the whole thing, just like I said would happen, you know, it lost in the middle, lost again, was down, was down. And then, you know, 
had a little bump here, which I don't know, maybe. Oh, and by the way, we didn't change any of the tuning for any of this. Same tune every pull. Same. That's what I'm here for. Referee. Yep. Referee. Tuning did not change. Same tune every file. Same tune every file. We just logged it. We, you know, I logged all the temps. We checked the manifolds, all that stuff. Anyway, um, you know, the LT2 did way better than I thought it was going to be and way better than what we've seen in the past, which is awesome. Like, you know, it ain't hurt my feelings. But anyway, it's two horsepower better right there. And then, like we've said in the past, shorter runner. It's going to lose torque, just like everything I've been describing. It's going to make a little power up top. I really didn't think, though, that it was going to exceed the power at this point in the game. I thought it would still be under, to be honest with you, to about here. And then I knew that the stock manifold would drop off. And then the LT2 would you know, carry the same number a little bit more, a little bit further. So if you talk in, you know, peak or whatever it is, it was four horsepower. They made the same amount of torque um, across the bit. Now, you know, way out here at extension, you know, I'm not going to public math, but whatever that is, 15 <laughs> um, at 62. So good, man. I'm, I'm glad it actually shows out. You know, any revenue stream for me is good. So, you know, I'm not against running my ported LT2 stuff, really, with a 95 throttle body to feed it. Um, so, however, saying that, with all the work that needs to be done to the thing to make it work, the porting costs and all that would definitely go up because it just simply takes longer. So instead of a, you know, the blue line $350 ported manifold, you've got the green line, which for me would be like a $550 ported manifold. Um, but the big thing to see here, I think, is that, you know, from stock to ported, you know, it's a massive gain. So, you know, I don't know if comparing them stock stock porter I, I don't know you guys can choose on that one it's up to you but like i said we're only going off the data that we have and i can pull up you know those five cars really and i guess i will if i need to where when we pulled off the lt2 and put the ported msd on ported msd was killed a it better killed, Just killed it. it everywhere um so that's all we had to go off of and i don't mind being wrong man you know like i said so then we put uh my ported msd on and just as suspected um, you know, it was tighter up top than I thought, but again, just like I was describing before, normally when we test my ported MSDs against the ported uh, stock stuff, the MSD has always been down. Um, I mean, granted, I've been working on my port game, and now we're talking bigger throttle bodies also. They all had 95s. So, could have been a lack of airflow thing before or whatever when we did our early testing. Kind of hard to tell. Um, but, you know, it was close. I mean, what is that? Four, what was it like five horsepower, 17 five to 22? Horsepower. Yeah. So, I mean, it did good. Uh, like I said, though, I posted all the porting that I did and went into it. I ported the runners as far back as I could get them. You know, I pulled all the tricks into the ported LT2 that I could um, to get them to work. And, you know, I think the effort's showing out. Um, I showed the work, and anybody that gets those is or has one ported from somewhere else feel free to look in yours and see what the work looks like it's up to you um so you know so the testing we did prior boils down to not all porting is equal essentially because we just seen it not perform yeah we've seen it I time mean, and time we were, again last we were, we were, yeah last weekend last weekend last weekend, last weekend was it not i know and that was just like trounced by everybody and that's what kind of started this whole thing it was like oh that's not fair it's not the same car it's not this it's not that it's like well dude it's just anecdotal evidence that backs up what we've seen five other times. We just decided not to make posts about the five other times, except for one or two, and I posted the data, and we'll all find the car, and we'll pull it up here and show it again. But that's why we're doing the testing, is because if we're wrong, we're wrong. We're wrong, we're wrong, man. I'm good with being wrong. I don't care. But the science that I've been talking about makes sense. It's exactly what I've been saying it does. You know what I mean? So, um, granted, this is a stock car. It doesn't even have headers. It doesn't really need any airflow. I mean, it's got nothing. So, so we're going to test in the future on a cammed car and see what that does. Yeah, like one of our legit all-in head cam cars, you know, because as we all know, like if an engine doesn't need something and it can't push something, there's no value to doing it. You know what I mean? It just, you can get all the in, but you can't get the out. I mean, we got four cats in the way and stock manifolds and all other stuff. So it's limiting the results, I would say, however, or if there was going to be any separations. But I'm happy with that, actually. Like, I'm glad it that it performed like that because at the end of the day it is a less 
a less costful, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Less expensive mint. Uh, yeah, there you go. I don't want to say cheaper. Like the ported MSD, you're talking 1800 probably. 17, 1800, depending on yeah, which color just, you get. Yeah, they just keep then going through the freaking roof, man. With the LT2, if you report it all in, probably made eight, nine hundred eight, eight, bucks. Yeah, nine, yeah, somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah. because even from our uh, competitors, or whatever you want to call them, our friends in the business, whoever's doing these things, um, if you click all the buttons on their website for it to look like this, it's eight hundred bucks, um, and that's buying a new one. The MSD for me. You know, it's still the clear choice. Granted, we could still put a bigger throttle body on the MSD where we can't on the other ones if we wanted to. Right. So with the MSD, you can run on 103 because that's what it's designed for. Right. And yeah. then so you do port an MSD with 103, then we're talking. You and know, you got to remember, it's always at your, it's like an oxymoron, your largest restriction. Mm -hmm. So whatever that smallest point is feeding whatever you've got going on behind it is the restriction. That's where it starts. So. Do I think if we put a 103 on this combo, it would make a difference? No, because no. it's got one mod. It's not a JLT all. intake, <laughs> and that's it. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> you know, it's not even trying to... Like, if we had E85, right? So, E85 brings its own oxygen somewhat to the party, but it still has a larger requirement also. So, you know, I don't know how much that would make a drastic change, but like I said, just headers may change this, where now the N is getting out. Um, and, you know, from what we've seen... And testing kind of backed up by other companies uh, is that, you know, the further it goes, the higher up it goes, the more it needs, the, the more the MSD shines. Um, and like I said, we're not even offering really any of this ported stuff at this moment in time. So for us, it's really a moot point. It was just to prove the science behind the situation that I had been talking about. That the one inch shorter runner, you know, maxed out, it didn't really hurt itself down here, you know, MSD to LT1 or LT2 and you know started to pull away up here granted i didn't change any tuning this car was tuned for a dead stock manifold you know but that was the whole point just see what the air does now if i started changing some stuff up here would it pull away more i don't know maybe um but yeah overall i'm glad we did this testing because i was convinced the thing was hot trash um from everything that we've seen and all the ones that we've pulled off uh without testing our own stuff so uh, now I know that at a certain point, you know, it's a viable mod. I mean, like I said, though, yeah, you get some up here again. And this is good that it pulled away right here. I'm going to get rid of the MSD so we can talk about just the LT2. So let's talk about, so because I, I know people are going to hit it in the comments, when is a, when would be a good time to run the LT2 and when would be a good, good, good time to switch to something like the MSD or the higher room? So here's the thing, right? If you're going to stay straight up full bolt-ons and, you know, the all-in isn't your total goal, then I don't see a problem with the LT2, to be honest with you. Um, you know, this... Like high ram graph. Well. I mean, the high ram's gonna yeah. destroy yeah. everything. Yeah. Oh, by the way, all these numbers are A8, uh, you know, fifth gear. Um, yeah. When would they switch to, or when should they go to... I'm still gonna say anytime you go head cam, you know, anything like that, if you gotta keep your flat hood. Um, then MSD. You know, right. and like with the grudge packages, you know, that kind right. of stuff. Um, yeah, a lot of times people see a high ram and ported by prey, they won't, they can't get a raise. Yeah, just keep the sticker off your car, bro. <laughs> just send me dividends. Just send me like 5 or 10%. Keep my name off your junk. Keep making money. So, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, ported LT1 to uh, ported LT2 with about everything I could do to both of them. So, you know, basically what we said. It's got its little ups and downs. Um, that part kind of baffles me a little bit. That's usually not what we see. But like I said, I didn't really work on the tune. The tune was done when the car was stocked a year and a half ago. Peak to peak four. You know, down here as tight as two or three. Everyone tunes different. Everyone tests different. You know, this is just, this is what we found. This is what we found. Yeah. And we can only go off of what we have. So I will change my opinion. So from what I saw in the past, with not my stuff, led us to believe that it was junk and a waste of time and money. Because by the time we ported it, got it set up to go on your car, oh, that goes back to what you were saying. You're talking 800 bucks. Now the MSD, like I said, just keeps getting more expensive. Um, so, like they're not even 1200 bucks, other things are stupid expensive. So, 
It's a good option, man, but it's not a $250 manifold that you're just slapping on your car. That's right. a freaking farce. And you can get similar results by doing a, a ported stock one and not yeah. spending $800. And, you know, like, I gave all the advantage I could to the LT2 and the MSD by running the larger throttle body, um, which, to me, is kind of a no-brainer. Like, it's easy. You should do it, mm -hmm. you know, instead of, I'm going to stick with my stock throttle body and all that stuff. I just, there's no point. Um and I'll say even at this point, like, we're not offering either of these. I don't have time for them. So. Till we, get, till take, we get in the new shop. Yeah, like, take that as you will. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't care. Like, I'm not making money off of either of these. Um, and we sell MSDs for retail. You can go buy one from anywhere you want. I don't care. And then we start, we just charge the boarding fee. That's it. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, we haven't even taken any in in a long time. I think we've taken in two. Yeah. It's been a while. For builds that were coming here. And the people have hit me up lately for stock ported intakes. I've told them we quit doing them for a while. So yeah, it's, I just don't have the time. I don't have to do, we're focused on other stuff. Yeah. So this testing is as unbiased as I could get it. We've got our referee here, you know, all that stuff. <laughs> so. This is the red line here is full bolt on with high ram, and you can see how it carries way out more. Obviously, this is on E and, and had headers and stuff, but this is you know, everyone says about the high ram, and there's a ton of cars, but it's more of just to show the curve, right? So, even if we take the numbers away and you know, overlaid them or whatever, it's still extending way out for you guys that say, you know, what about the high ram? And we've posted. A metric butt ton of uh, high yeah. ram stuff. We always recommend the high ram unless you don't want to cut your hood. Uh, yep. Is it? Always for everything. Yeah, man. Good results. But, um, you know, at the end of the day. Still um, uglier than your model. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll do more testing with the heads cam and see what, see what prevails and see how that goes. And I look way better in this fucking shirt than anybody else does.